Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining today's uh, YouTube live session hosted by Enstron. My name is Robert Griffith, and I'm a product support engineer uh, with Enstron. And today, I'm going to be talking with you guys about the automated specimen measurement devices, or ASMDs, that we use with our Enstron frames to help customers streamline their testing, to help automate the specimen measurement portion of their testing. Um, a little bit of what I want to cover today is the physical configuration for the ASMD, so any sort of the cables involved, how this gets configured within the admin tab of Blue Hill Universal Software, as well as configuring an ASMD to use with the test method itself. Um, I'm going to then run a test in real time to show you how the micrometer can input measurements directly into the software. And then finally, we'll end with some questions that have popped up during the course of today's session. So what I want to highlight first today, again, like I said, is the physical configuration. So our micrometers are pretty simple in terms of how they connect with the frame. You have just any standard micrometer, um, and you have a, a stand to attach it to, just so it's at a more ergonomic, usable height for folks. Um, it is then connected to the frame via a USB interface adapter cable. So in this case, we're going from the standard Mitutoyo um, interface output from the micrometer to just a USB adapter that connects directly into the back of the computer running Blue Hill Universal. I also have this set up today with a, a third cable. So this cable in my left hand here is our foot switch, which is currently on the ground. So when you are using the ASMD, there's two different ways to have the micrometer input measurements into the software. The first one being the button directly on the side of the micrometer here, which we'll illustrate a little bit later, as well as a foot switch. So if you want to have a hands-free um, motion with it, you can tap the foot switch, and that'll also load it. So that's pretty much it for the physical configuration. It's just a couple of cables and a USB adapter. You then, to set this up within the software, are going to go into the admin tab of Blue Hill Universal. So you can see when the admin tab opens up, it's going to open up directly to the configuration tab, which is where we want to be. And then you're going to click on options or tap on options. This menu will show you various options you can turn on and off for devices with the frame, including a automatic specimen, specimen measurement device, or ASMD. So I'm going to tap this. I have it toggled on, and then I'm going to tap configure. This configure window brings up all of the device settings that you need to make sure are correct in order for the frame and the software to be able to interact with the micrometer and read its outputs. So all of these settings, the various rates, the data bits, the stop bits, um, parity, all of those settings are described in the in installation drawings and installation manuals for the ASMD. So there's no need to memorize these. Those will always be available to you on hand. The only thing that is important that I like to highlight is this middle section on the bottom row called the COM port. So anytime you have a device plugged into a computer, it's via a USB port, it's communicating with it via what they call a COM port. And so you just need to make sure that the COM port that your USB uh, cable is plugged into also corresponds to the one you have selected. So I have the USB plugged into COM, what is correlates to COM port 1 on this computer. And the way that you can check that is going into the native device manager settings within Windows 10. It's as simple as just searching for this device manager down in the bottom, bottom row. Um, so those are all the port settings. Again, making sure that COM port 1 aligns up with the port that you're physically plugged into. And then we have a hardware tab. This is just to configure either a single or dual micrometer setup. For today's sake, we just have a single micrometer. Um, you can configure the system to recognize two at the same time. But right now, we're just going to run one for today's demonstration. So I'll tap OK. And that is all that you need to do to configure the ASMD. So now that the software recognizes that it is a configured device, it is now able to be used within a test method. So like you guys are used to now, I'm going to click on our test tab within the software. And then I have a pre-configured method called ASMD test method that I'm going to run. Yep. So like any other test method, when you're configuring how it works and how it runs, that's all done underneath the method tab of the software. 
the ASMD is configured underneath specimen and then underneath the properties. Once you have an ASMD correctly set up within the admin settings of Blue Hill Universal, this red box right here for setup ASMD becomes available for you to tap on. So if I tap on that, this opens up the main configuration menu for, for dictating how the software will use the micrometer. Right now I have it measuring just two dimensions, um, our initial width and our initial thickness. There, you toggle them on and off as simply as just tapping this enable button in the upper left-hand corner to turn them on and off. Right now I have final width and final thickness turned off. These are measurements that you can take at the end of a test, which I can talk to a little bit later at the end of this demonstration. But for our initial width and our initial thickness, you can have a couple different result types that Blue Hill Universal will take from the micrometer. So the first one is average. So average is just gonna take the average value of however many measurements that you take. In this case, I have it set up to take three measurements. You can make it be five if you would like, you can make it eight, whatever you would like it to be. It's as simple as just adjusting that number in that lower, lower right-hand corner box. So right now I have it taking the average of three measurements. You can also have it take either the minimum, the maximum, or the median of a range of measurements that you guys uh, choose to have the micrometer measure. It's up to you guys. There's a lot of flexibility within this. So I'm going to keep it as the average. And then same thing for the thickness over here, same interface, um, just for thickness instead of width. And then important thing to note here is you have to make sure you configure the correct units within this portion of the software. The software isn't able to read the units given directly off the micrometer. That has to be read within and configured within this window of the software. So I have my initial width, initial thickness set up. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go back to the test tab. So at this point in time, our micrometer is set up and ready to go. It doesn't need any more um, to, uh, playing around within the settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by measuring the width of our specimen. So I have a standard dog bone specimen right here. I'm going to open up the micrometer, and then I'm going to close onto the width. And I'm going to tighten down until I hear a click. That tells me that it has reached the correct dimension. And I'm going to start by pressing this red button on the side. And when I do that, that's going to populate a, a window that will show you all of the measurements that you are taking. So right now, you can see it has two columns, a initial width and an initial thickness. Um, the width, you can see in the bottom left-hand side, has a table where it shows you the 10.098. That's the first measurement that I took. And you know that it's measuring width based on the green light that has been lit up in that data indicator as well. So I'm going to take another measurement at the middle of the specimen, press the button. I'm going to take another specimen, another measurement towards the top end, make sure it's clicked in, press the button again. Since the software knows it only needs to take three readings, once it has three, it'll automatically jump over to the thickness portion where then you can then do the same thing. This time around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the foot switch. So I'm going to tighten down on the thick side of the specimen until it clicks, press the foot switch once, once, and then you see that that measurement has populated there. Next, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the, next, best, the next measurement. And the third and final. And I'm good to go. So once you have your measurements taken, tap the OK button. And then you can see up here the operator inputs for width and for thickness have both changed to be the average value of what was taken. So now it's as simple as just loading your specimen into the grips and running a test. So I'm going to do that. Right. And so now you're ready to test. And the software is going to be reading the thickness and uh, width measurements that were taken from the micrometer that you, again, saw populated here in the operator inputs to run any of its calculations. So those are the dimensions, again, used for calculations such as tensile stress, 
um, like I have here. So once you have run one specimen and you want to run a second, the rest of this is pretty straightforward to use. So all you're going to do is take out your first specimen, knock out trips, and then you'll take your second specimen and then do the same thing, run it through the micrometer um, to take your measurements, and you're good to go. So it's a bit of a streamlined way to um, measure specimens rather than using a handheld caliper. Um, sometimes you get more user error with those calipers um, than you would with this with the micrometer itself. Um, that's all I really have in terms of the demonstration portion for today, um, for today's live session. Um, these devices are relatively simple to use and set up, but we get a lot of questions from our customers about them, which is why we wanted to highlight them today. So at this point in time, I'm going to look through the chat um, to see if there are any questions that popped up um, that I can help answer regarding the use of micrometers within Blue Hill Universal. So it looks like I don't see any questions at this point in time. So I think what I'll do is I'll, oh, there one, there, one just popped up now. So the first one that I see here is um, from Veronica Costa. So it's what micrometer, what micrometers are compatible with Blue Hill Universal? It's a great question. Um, that's something we get asked uh, by our customers all the time. So we have three different types of devices that you can use within Blue Hill U that the software will be able to recognize and configure. So that's any micrometers sold by Instron. Those have all been tested in-house to make sure that they work and they communicate easily within Blue Hill. Any micrometers from Mitutoyo that are MUX-10 compatible, as well as any Gageway 3 devices that you can set to the MUX-10 protocol. So it all has to do with just that specific um, MUX-10 compatibility. As long as you have a device that falls within those parameters, it'll work within Blue Hill Universal. So you can get them directly from Instron, or you can get them from directly from Meditoyo or another third-party supplier. I don't see any other questions, but I do have a couple of FAQs that I wanted to um, go over with everyone to that I we get asked all the time. So this first one I'm going to pop up is, can the software be configured with two micrometers? Um, why would someone want to use two micrometers? So the answer to that is yes, it can be. That was what I talked about at the beginning of the demonstration, is you can set up the use for both. The reasoning behind that being, when you are switching from measuring the width of a specimen to the thickness, a lot of times those numbers can be very large, or there can be a large difference between those numbers. And turning the dial, the very precise dial on a micrometer over and over and over again can be sometimes time consuming. So it's often, you'll see a lot of customers set up a micrometer specifically to take in all the width measurements and then another micrometer to take in all the thickness measurements. That's um. Pretty much the, that's the main use case that we see people using two inputs is if they really want to streamline their testing in their lab. Um, the next one is that we get asked a lot of times is what measurement values can you input using the micrometer? As an example, can you take an average? So yeah, that's again what I highlighted earlier. You can have the, you can have the device take an average of three measurements, average of five measurements, whatever you want it to be. It can find the minimum, the maximum, as well as the median of those ranges um, for, your, for you as well. So I don't think I see any more questions in the chat. So what I'm going to do is, oh, so there's another question I see here. So can we use a microm, oh, let me put it up. Can we use a, micrometer, a micrometer and an automated test system? So yes, so all of our automation systems, so these are tests that you load a rack of, a rack of specimens in, press start, and the robot will come pick them up, take them, load them, break them, and then pull them out and just run that over and over again so you don't have to be there present for the testing. Um, all of those use a micrometer to help measure the specimens initially. They're a little bit different than the ones uh, that I showed today that set up on the stand. Um, they're, they're a lot more automated um, to, to kind of, you'll drop a specimen into a location and then it will the specimen will be centered and then you'll get a thickness and a width measurements. Um, but those are, we do use micrometers for our automation systems as well. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Nope. Okay. Well, with that, um, that's all I have for you guys today. We try to keep these things pretty short and sweet. I want to say thank you for watching and tuning in. Um, we've been getting a lot of really great feedback from our customers on this. So we're going to keep doing them um, over the next couple of weeks. So make sure to stay tuned at the end of this to see a little bit of some info for our next session that we have coming up. Um, so thank you, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.